Each year, heart-related diseases kill more than 850,000 Americans, causing more deaths than all cancers combined. There are many forms of heart disease. The two major types are ischemic, that is heart failure from injury to the heart caused by blockages in the coronary arteries. And the other type is a dilated cardiomyopathy, which is often uh, cause is unknown, but the heart progressively gets larger and larger over a period of time. Oftentimes, lifestyle changes can prevent some types of heart disease. The lifestyle changes we're talking about include a good diet, exercise, and eliminating risk factors such as high blood pressure, uh, controlling diabetes, lowering lipids in uh, your diet, and changing habits such as smoking, which is one of the absolute worst things you can do. But sometimes, those changes and even medications are not enough. Once we've passed the point of therapy with medications, uh, we, have, we turn towards interventional therapies, including catheter interventions with stents and surgical interventions when the chest is open and the patient actually has an operation either to bypass an artery, replace a valve, or correct some abnormality of the heart muscle itself. When all these therapies fail and the heart is losing its ability to pump blood, it's time for life-saving measures. The next step is replacing the heart. And if we take a look at the heart now, your heart's as big as your fist, so this blown up model uh, shows the various chambers of the heart. And what we're really concerned about is over here is the left ventricle of the heart. That's where most of the pumping is done and most of the work is done. But patients often have to wait for a matching donor heart. Once a patient is chosen for heart transplantation, he's put on a waiting list. And I want to emphasize the word waiting because uh, he can wait anywhere from one day uh, to many years. However, some patients are not considered good candidates for heart transplantation. When we're evaluating patients for heart transplantation, uh, the good candidates are put on the waiting list for transplant, but there are many who do not meet criteria, and they are considered for uh, device support long term. While waiting for a donor heart, a patient's condition could become critical to the point where they may only have days or even hours to live. When the patients are on the list taking a turn for the worse and uh, we've run out of medical therapies, then uh, we're looking at a mechanical pump to replace the heart as the only solution for these patients. The first heart transplant was performed in 1967 in Cape Town, South Africa by Dr. Christian Barnard. In 1982, Dr. William DeVries performed the first artificial heart implant using the Jarvik 7 artificial heart. His patient, Barney Clark, lived 112 days on this device. In 1985, at the University of Arizona, Dr. Jack Copeland was the first to use the artificial heart to successfully bridge a patient to human heart transplant. From 1993 to 2002, the Cardio West Temporary Total Artificial Heart was in a pivotal clinical study. On October 15, 2004, the artificial heart received FDA approval as the world's first and still only temporary total artificial heart to be used as a bridge to transplant in patients at risk of death from end-stage irreversible biventricular failure. The Jarvik 7 became the Cardio West Total Artificial Heart uh, a number of years ago. There were some small changes made in the device, uh, but they really didn't amount to much. What changes have occurred have been the changes in our ability to anticoagulate and prevent infections. And there's been a tremendous improvement in both of those areas. The Cardio West Temporary Total Artificial Heart is the only device of its kind available today. We use an artificial heart when the patient is rapidly deteriorating and when either both chambers are involved, both the right and left, so they need biventricular support, or they're going down so rapidly that other organs are beginning to fail, such as the kidneys, liver, and lungs. In that case, we use a Cardio West Total Artificial Heart. It's the only device that will save that type of patient. Once the patient's dying heart is removed, the Cardio West Artificial Heart is implanted. Well, the Cardio West Total Artificial Heart takes over the circulation. We put it into the patient 
and it supports both ventricles, both sides of the heart. It pumps at a high flow with a low filling pressure and it allows recovery of those organs that are dying, such as the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, and the brain. What these patients with end-stage heart disease need most of all is a large amount of healthy blood flow to resuscitate their organs and body. This device will pump up to 9.5 liters per minute. This is more than any other device uh, on the market or available anywhere in the world today. The CardioWest Temporary Total Artificial Heart has been proven to double odds of survival. A pivotal clinical study published August 2004 in the New England Journal of Medicine showed that heart transplant eligible patients who are near death from end-stage biventricular heart failure increase their odds of living another year from 31 percent to 70 percent when they are bridged to transplant with the CardioWest Temporary Total Artificial Heart based on a comparison with a set of historical control patients who are matched to the patients receiving the artificial heart. In 2000, Bill Wall almost died of heart failure. Thank God for the Cardio West that 159 days between September 13th and February 22nd, the wonderful doctors at the Sarver Heart Clinic at UMC and the Cardio West gave me an opportunity to stay alive long enough to get a real heart. Today, he lives a vibrant life, winning medals at transplant games worldwide. Last week, I was named as the captain of Team USA. I'll be captain of the cycling team for the U.S. Transplant Olympic team. Uh, in Thailand, I'll be competing in swimming, cycling, and track and field. On April 10th, Don Sholin's dying heart was removed and a Cardio West artificial heart was implanted. Don's condition improved, and 33 days later, he was successfully transplanted with a donor heart. Don had three hearts in 33 days. Before I received the heart, I was pretty much a goner. I had brought myself to the hospital, and within uh, three days of arriving at the hospital, I was on the artificial heart. This is the artificial heart that I had inside my body that saved my life. I was transplanted three days ago. I have a, a new heart in now, a real transplanted heart, and I feel great, I feel good. I'm up and I'm about and uh, uh, getting off all the tubes, back on solid food, I'm feeling very good. Until recently, recipients of the temporary total artificial heart were confined to the hospital while awaiting a donor heart transplant. Thanks to the work of Dr. Ali L. Baniosi and his team at the Heart and Diabetes Center in Bad Oeynhausen, Germany, the first artificial heart portable driver received CE mark approval for use in Europe. Now stable patients in Europe can be discharged and recover at home while awaiting a donor heart. Many are able to shop, travel, and visit friends. We have more confidence in the uh, in the Cardiwest total artificial heart system, and we. Uh, now putting that system in the sickest cohort of patients. Hans Walter Thrun lives in a small town in Germany. He had his total artificial heart implanted five months ago. The combination of artificial heart and this machine is the freedom to live in your own four walls here, with your friends, with your wife and your children, and you, are, you can live a very normally life. That is uh, the great gift of this artificial heart. Syncardia is planning to make an application to the FDA to conduct a clinical study of the companion driver in the U.S. The study is designed to evaluate the intended use of the driver to allow stable patients in the U.S. to recover at home while they wait for a donor heart. With the total artificial heart that resuscitates the patient, we add a portable driver, the patient can actually be discharged from the hospital. And portable drivers are available in Europe for this purpose. Patients have gone home, uh, they have gone back to work, they've gone to the theater, they've gone uh, shopping, uh, they've driven cars, they do all types of things. It normalizes the quality of their life while they're waiting for the transplant. Most forms of heart disease can be successfully managed through diet, exercise, and medication. The CardioWest Temporary Total Artificial Heart 
is a bridge to transplant for patients dying from end-stage biventricular failure, a condition when both sides of the heart lose their ability to pump enough blood to sustain life. While only a small percentage of patients will ever need an artificial heart, you can be guaranteed state-of-the-art health care at Syncardia Certified Hospitals. This video is for informative purposes only. If you have questions regarding your health and heart care, please speak with your licensed health care provider.